investigate an old anti-Semitic story. The Jews are taking over a pristine white town. The Jews are criminals and oppressing the whites. And so the Jews must be stopped. Rabbi Francine Rawson says those were the motives of a white supremacist and neo-Nazi campaign targeting her family. Five years ago, in search of a more quiet and peaceful life, they moved from New Jersey to Whitefish, Montana. Weeks after Donald Trump won the electoral college vote, the Rostons and other Jews in town came under public harassment and a cyber terror attack by a Whitefish-led group that had rallied in Washington, D.C. that November. Richard Spencer ended his speech with cries of, Hail Trump, Hail our people, Hail victory. The trauma-inducing ordeal has led to a new reality. We now have armed security for our Jewish community events, and we greatly expanded the secure, our home security system. Rabbi Ralston shared the lessons learned with his international summit at Stockton University entitled Building Resilience in the New Threat Paradigm, Targeted Violence Against People of Faith. Among the lessons, don't talk to the media. And we cannot rely on local or federal government to protect us. I honor and value that protection, but faith communities cannot rely on it. We must do everything we can to secure our houses of worship, to train our congregations on security. I think that's true. Uh, you know, government can do a lot, and government is there. But if you look at, look at the nature of events as they occur, like even 9-11, the first responders are not the first responders, quote unquote. First responders are the people who are there when it happens. Uh, and, and those people need to be trained. Trained to prepare. John Farmer leads Rutgers Miller Center for Community Protection and Resilience. He says prevention is the ideal, but preparing to mitigate does pay off as well. Farmer says in 2015, a gunman killed a security guard outside a Copenhagen synagogue, but the synagogue's lockdown capability stopped his access to 200 people at a bar mitzvah. They were not able to prevent the attack they were able to mitigate its effects. John Farmer, who helped organize this event, says he doubts four years ago this summit would have attracted as many men and women as it has, and especially those from overseas. When we started this work, uh, there was just a dawning recognition that there was a problem. And what we've seen, unfortunately, flourish in those four years is, is the, the, the spread of, of this hateful, hateful ideologies of all different kinds of extremisms. Extremism aimed at mosques churches, synagogues, museums, and at people of faith. Farmer says for some, fear, intolerance, and hate fill the vacuum that ignorance of history creates. At the summit, Jews and law enforcers from Sweden, Germany, and Belgium say they're witnessing a huge rise in hate, and they're also seeing a new type of supremacist winning elections. They are just absolutely well-dressed, well-shaved, uh, Wall Street-looking kind of guys, and they all have degrees. One town in Belgium has partnered with the European Jewish Congress and the Security and Crisis Center to launch CARE, Community Access and Resilience Education. They produced a series of short videos, this one on what to do in the event of an active shooter. Remember these three words, run, hide, report. The consequence of the situation we are facing now is that our organizations have to divert a lot of their financial resources and invest it into Security. One speaker said the U.S. Homeland Security Department has just created the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, to offer houses of worship a security advisor. Law enforcers encourage those houses to practice vigilance. But putting an eye on the person, how, if you have a, what we refer to as an elder or an usher, kind of just see what's going on. Maybe even go talk to the person and welcome it in. But while they're doing that, you're doing an evaluation or a vetting system to see if there's other issues that you need to be aware of. Because of how religion is built, right, we are built to trust everyone. Well, the times have changed, so we need to change with that. Faith and law enforcement leaders say finding common ground and staying in communication can result in life-changing trust and safety. For an example, the superintendent of New Jersey State Police echoed an NYPD captain who is Muslim on how much has changed since 9-11. It's very different now. When state police, uh, when troopers show up at mosques, uh, it's very welcoming. And that's Again, that's not just by getting on a phone call and checking a box. New Jersey's Director of Homeland Security and Preparedness, Jared Maple, says grants are available to help houses of worship improve their security. 
there is no place for hate here in our communities. And I don't care which of the 21 counties, and I don't care which of the faiths are impacted or affected. Uh, that message is, it has to resonate and be clear. The sponsors bus the attendees to a church for a closed-door training exercise in this two-day summit, a gathering aimed at helping a community that prays for the best but must prepare to prevent the worst. In Atlantic City, Michael Hill, NJTV News.